Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Friday, February the 22nd. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club, and this is my Canucks take, all in one take. I want to give a quick shout out to Jimmy, who I met at the Canucks game last night. Thanks for watching, Jimmy, I appreciate you stopping to say hi. And very quickly, we've heard earlier this morning that NHL announced a trade. Matt Deshane is out of Ottawa. Him and another defenseman traded to the Columbus Blue Jackets for two prospects, two Ford prospects, a first round draft pick and a conditional first round draft pick. And that second first round draft pick is if, um, you know, uh, Duchesne actually extends, uh, signs a contract extension in Columbus. So I know a lot of other vloggers will probably detail this trade, detail the prospects in, in greater detail. I'm a more of a Canucks guy, but I want to acknowledge that at least I knew that a trade happened there. How's that? Let's talk about last night's game. Very frustrating game. I was there with my brother. That's not why it was frustrating. Also, my son was there with his English teacher as a thank you for writing him some, some reference letters. So that was pretty cool. So the four of us were there, sitting in the same section, a few, a few rows apart. And man, there's something about the Arizona Coyotes beating the Vancouver Canucks in overtime at Rogers Arena. It's the second time that I've seen this happen. Second time in the past month. I think the last time was a 4-3 win. Last night was a 3-2 win for Arizona. And this game was frustrating on so many levels. It was frustrating to watch that Arizona doesn't play a very pretty style. They play a very tenacious style on the penalty kill, which I'll get to in a few minutes. But overall, it was frustrating because the Canucks should have won this game. They were heading into the third period up 1-0 at home against a team they are tied within the standings fighting for fighting with in the standings for a playoff position. And to give up a lead, not only tie, to then go behind and have to rely on a late, you know, a late, almost a last minute goal just to salvage a point is almost unacceptable. And yes, I know I'm the founder of the GLCPC. I'm still positive. I still want the Canucks to make the playoffs. But I looked at the standings. I didn't know that they had fallen to 25th, over, I, 25th overall. So they're only a few spots out of being in the bottom three or four which I thought was unfathomable about uh, you know two or three weeks ago. But I guess because everything's so tight, especially the Western Conference, you lose one or two games and you can drop three or four places in the standings. And that's where the Canucks are right now. They are, I guess, 19th. They're 11th in the West now behind Colorado, Chicago, Arizona. I guess that makes them 12th actually now that I think about it because uh, Minnesota is still holding the 8th spot. Yeah, so in 9, 10, 11 is our teams like Arizona, Colorado, and, and Chicago. So Vancouver sits 12th now. Still, there are only two points out of, um, of a playoff spot, although they've got a leapfrog three teams now, or four teams, because um, they did pick up the, the single point, which I guess is, is a glass half full way of looking at it. Hey, I'm, I'm the, I should be talking about positive stuff. So the Vancouver Canucks lose 3-2 in overtime to the Arizona Coyotes. And like I said, almost inexcusable that they give up a, a lead going, um, a lead that they're holding in the third period. So let's talk about some good things. Ryan Spooner made his debut. I think he got 15 minutes of ice time, uh, less as the game went on, but he didn't look out of place at all. Actually, he was fast. I was very impressed with his speed. And uh, you know, you could tell he knows how to play hockey. <laughs> you can tell he's got good wheels. I thought he found open space well. I thought he tried to make some nice plays to Pedersen and Besser, his line mates, to start the, to start the game. So I thought overall Spooner had a, a decent debut. I thought he played well. Um, obviously, Adam Gaudet had a really good game in that he scored the game tying goal. He was on the ice for the go-ahead goal for Arizona, but Travis Green was quick to point out that he didn't blame Gaudet on that goal, although it was Gaudet's man that scored. There's other defensive breakdowns on that play. But uh, Gaudet, to his credit, said he wanted to be a difference maker, and he was very determined to make up for that, so to speak. And he did that with a wonderful shot tying the game with less than three minutes left. So there's Adam Gaudet. Uh, I think it was less than three minutes left. Antoine Roussel had a... Oh, Adam Gaudet, by the way, that's his fourth goal in the past eight games two in the past week, uh, you know, getting back to last week against LA, and I think both game tying goals. So he's becoming Mr. Clutch very quickly. So um, that's a great sign for Canucks fans. Ad Antoine Roussel, two beautiful assists once again, and now he is in sole possession of fourth place in scoring. Behind the big three, of course, Antoine Roussel now has 27.6 goals, 21 assists. His career high is 29, so he'll easily surpass that this year. He's, like I said uh, last month, He's, or earlier this month, he's the unsung hero for me of the Canucks this season. He passed Nikolai Godobin, a guy who didn't play, was his ninth healthy scratch. And as I talked about yesterday, maybe Godobin has played his last game as a Vancouver Canuck. Sotner on the back end was fine. Um, he, he played 
he only played 12 minutes because he was paired with Gabranson. Gabranson only played 12 minutes as a big talking point. I'll get to ice times in a second. And then, uh, but he was fine. He's got three, um, three hits on the night as well. So those were some of the good performances. Uh, I, and then um, was he, uh, Spooner had the most, actually, shots, shots on goal. I think he had four or five. And then, no, Spooner had four. Troy Stetcher had the most shots on goal. Stetcher had five. Stetcher and Hutton played well again. I think Stetcher had 30 minutes. Hutton at 27 minutes, and that's because Biega and Puglia at 16 and 17 minutes, and then Good Branson and Sautner only at 12 minutes. You look at the forwards, of course, the big three had 22, 23 minutes. Then it trickled down, and then the, the three low guys were, um, I think it was, I think only Granlin only had eight minutes, and then uh, you had, actually, that might be wrong. I know someone only had eight minutes, but maybe it was Granlin because I know Erickson only had 10 and Gaudet only had nine. So I think those are the three guys on the low end uh, when it came to minutes of the forwards. Overall, though, um, it, it was frustrating because just imagine, we, we talked about a four-point game. Well, actually, three points were, were given. But when you talk about a four-point game, you talk about you gaining two and your opponent not gaining two, and two plus two makes four. So the Canucks had a chance to basically move into uh, sole possession of eighth with a win. Um, no, they won. Sorry, because Minnesota won. Uh, the, the Canucks would have uh, got to within one point of Minnesota, but then they would have kept Arizona. Uh, what? Sorry. Let's try that again. The Canucks would have moved within one point of the Minnesota Wild, and they would have kept Arizona further down, but instead the opposite happened. Arizona moves up, leapfrogs, uh, goes higher than the Canucks, and the Canucks are now looking up at Arizona, at Chicago, at Colorado, and at Minnesota. Arizona and Minnesota sound alike. That's why I kept thinking that I was repeating myself. Maybe I was. I'll have to look at the video. So overall, um, the Canucks at least have a chance to get back at it, but against a very tough New York Islanders team a team islanders team that is leading the metropolitan division surprisingly um but that metropolitan division is going to get very interesting it's already exciting interesting with the islanders and then of course with um pittsburgh and washington and columbus all there in columbus now acquiring matt duchene they look to be a favorite to at least lock up one of those those three guarantee playoff spots from that division but we'll worry about columbus later we need to talk about the islanders coming up i'll check in tomorrow with a video previewing tomorrow night's game but all in all today a frustrating result we had some good um you know some good performances in gaudet and roussel i thought ryan spooner was fine and then some not so good performances you know good branson with only 12 minutes don't know what's going to happen there um, oh, I guess the one thing I, I wanted to say, the reason why, one of the main reasons why we lost, the two reasons, first one is the power play. That was, um, and I think we went 0 for 3 again. Uh, they're like 4 for 50-something in the past 18 games. It's brutal. And I remember at the start of the season, we got so excited. We said, oh man, Pedersen and Besser and Horvat all in the same power play unit. And last night we saw, yes, we knew that Arizona's power, penalty kill was first overall in the league. And we knew that they were going to come hard. But you can see how aggressive they were. They took away Pedersen's time and space. And Stetcher didn't have the best game running the power play from, from the point. So the Canucks power play looks stale. They don't get the puck to Horvat down low. And when they do, he takes too long to make that backhand pass. I think Horvat's got to get in front of the net. they got to get some motion. they got to get their fifth guy doing something, skating around or causing a distraction. I don't know. Um, and, then, and then even Besser and Pedersen need to show more movement because they just stand there stationary on the, on the sidewalls and then it's up to Stetcher to get it to them but if no one respects Stetcher shot then you can kind of cheat towards Besser and Pedersen so then it becomes getting a puck to the net where Horvat or Levo or someone's got to do something there and I've heard suggestions why not put Antoine Roussel um, in front of the net or on that first power play unit given that he's you know he's playing so well and like I said fourth in, in team scoring and he's got a really good eye got really good hands so maybe that's something the Canucks can look at so that was number one the power play's got to get fixed They're, it's probably the reason why the Canucks are not in the playoff spot imagine a, a timely goal here or there imagine going in that third period ahead two nothing then the Coyotes got to play a completely different game but no instead they were only Canucks only um, went up in the period into the period going leading one nothing and Arizona was able to tie that up. And they tied it up because Pouliot, completely against the flow of the play, took a stupid penalty. Yeah, I think he, he twirled. He was on the ice with Stetcher, so I don't know if Stetcher was on earlier, Pouliot was off later, or a combination or whatever. But Pouliot basically turned towards his own end, lost the puck, and then hooked an Arizona Coyotes forward, and the Coyotes scored on the ensuing power play. And that really killed the momentum. The Canucks had a poor third period anyways. Uh, it, it, inexcusable. You keep using that word, but it's inexcusable how flat they came out in the third period. But still, you, uh, you still had a sense that the Canucks were going to win the game, that they were in complete control until Pugliot took that penalty. Then Arizona scores two quick goals.
goals actually and it is that to Godet to tie it up with a few minutes left like I mentioned so a lot of things not to like about the Canucks but the good thing is they have a chance to win tomorrow night then they win against Anaheim a winnable game um, I'm not going on Saturday against the Islanders but I am going on Monday night against Anaheim and the Canucks, you know, if they can take four points somehow, it won't be easy. But if they take four points, they'll be right in the thick, thick of things once again. So maybe that's the positives we can take out of, out of the fact that we played two times in the next three nights. So Canucks fans, we'd love to hear your comments. I was a little bit scattered today because I, I think I'm still frustrated. I, I'm frustrated that we had the potential to, to do more damage and to keep Arizona lower in the standings, as I tried to explain a few minutes ago. We'd love to hear your comments. What do you think of the game? And you can even project ahead. What do you think they're going to do to at the trade deadline, which is amazingly only three days away now? And uh, you know, there's Ed there, there's Godobin, there's Grand. There's a lot of things we can talk about. But talk about last night's game as well. What were your impressions? What do you think of Spooner in his debut? What do you think of Sautner on the back end? Do you think he held his own? What do you think of the low ice time for Good Branson? What do you think of the forwards? What do you think of the power play? Whatever you write about, I will make sure I read it and I'll do my best to re react and reply. Subscribe if you like to like this video. If you like to, I will check in tomorrow morning as I preview the Canucks versus the Islanders. Enjoy the day. It's a little rainy, a little snowy. It's not the best, but be safe, whatever you're doing, especially if you're in Vancouver, trying to navigate these roads. Have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks, go.